Do you know why 90% of traders lose money when they trade stocks, forex or crypto? It's not just because they suck at trading. The real reason is that the markets are manipulated against you. The market is literally designed in a way that it only benefits the elites at the top. If you do not understand how they are playing the game, you will lose. If you can play by their rules, you can make massive profits and eventually become a top 1% trader. But first, you have to understand who are the elites that control the markets and how do they manipulate the markets. And these are the exact questions that will be answered in this video. The year was 1910, November 22nd to be exact. A few of the most powerful and richest men in the United States went off secretly to a private island off the coast of Georgia called the Jekyll Island. Senator Nelson Aldrich was the one who organized this meeting. He put in a lot of effort to keep this meeting a secret by telling the public that they were going on a duck hunting trip. He then specifically instructed the six men who were attending this meeting to report one at a time to a train station in New Jersey so they could board his personal train car. He also told them to only use their first names to prevent the staff from learning about their real identities. Then they gathered together at the richest, the most exclusive and the most inaccessible club in the world called the Jekyll Island Club. And the person who arranged for the group to use this club's facilities was none other than JP Morgan, who was one of the most influential and richest bankers at that point of time. Now, who are this secret group of people attending this secret meeting? These seven men represented one quarter of the world's wealth at that point of time. Senator Aldrich organized this meeting because he wanted to discuss with these elites to come up with a way to reform the financial system. The purpose of this secret meeting was to craft up a plan for a new central bank in the United States and to address the banking and financial issues facing the United States. Their goal was to create a central banking system that would stabilize the financial system, provide liquidity during times of crisis, and also to regulate the strength of the US dollar. This central banking system would come to be called the Federal Reserve, and it will go on to become the most important and the most powerful central bank in the world that has the power to move the financial markets. They held this meeting secretly so the American public would not know that the members of the most influential financial families and organizations in the world were the ones that devised a plan for the new banking system. These men knew that the Federal Reserve System would not have existed if the public had known that they were the ones that came up with it. Now you must be wondering, what does all this got to do with trading? Whether you are trading stocks, forex or crypto, they are all influenced by one thing and that is interest rates. And the Federal Reserve? They are the ones who control the interest rates. When the Feds lower the interest rates, it makes it easier for consumers like us to borrow more money. And when people borrow more money, they will spend more money on goods and services. This will increase prices of stocks, but it weakens the currency value. On the other hand, if the Feds increase the interest rates, stock prices will go down and the currency value will go up. As for cryptocurrencies, they are treated as a hedge against inflation. Therefore, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum, they tend to go up when the value of fiat currencies like US dollar go down. The Federal Reserve has these three main roles. Number one, they control the nation's monetary policy, meaning they manage the money supply and interest rates so that there is maximum employment, stable prices, and moderate long-term interest rates. Number two, they supervise and regulate banks and other financial institutions to ensure stability of financial system. Number three, they act as the lender of last resort in times of financial crisis like the COVID-19 or the 2008 financial crisis. I decided to call the Federal Reserve the gods of the markets because their decisions and actions can significantly impact market movements. Before a certain high impact news like non-farm payroll or FOMC comes out, Forex traders will sit at their laptops refreshing their forexfactory.com because they all know that the moment the high impact news comes out, price can easily jump up or down by 100 pips and decide where the market is headed towards. But times like this, when the high impact news comes out, 
is the perfect opportunity for the manipulators to steal money from you. Which brings me to the next group of elites. The manipulators. Now, what if I tell you that the feds are not the ones that we traders should be scared of the most? There is a bigger and more secretive group out there that most traders do not know about. This group has so much power and influence that they not only control the financial markets, but some of them actually control the world. They are what I call the manipulators. You see, we retail traders are just a small fish in this big ocean. We do not have the capital or the power to move the markets. The manipulators are the big fishes in the ocean, the whales and the sharks that have the ability to move the markets through different manipulation tactics. While researching on the manipulators, I found something incredibly disturbing. There is a secret company that controls the markets and the world. It is not Google, not Facebook, and definitely not TikTok. It is BlackRock. BlackRock is the most powerful company that you have probably never heard of. It is the world's largest asset manager with $10 trillion currently in its portfolio. Not a billion, trillion dollars with a T. That is around $40 trillion in circulation around the world. That means BlackRock manages a quarter of the world's money. This company owns a percentage of companies from every industry you can think of. Food, technology, energy, and finance. They are one of the top shareholders of the majority of the biggest companies on the stock exchange like Apple, Microsoft, and even Meta. Whatever company that you can name, BlackRock owns a part of it. And when you're so powerful, the government does not control you. You control the government. During the 2008 financial crisis, BlackRock created a secretive financial advisory group to help governments, central banks, and financial institutions worldwide. This group does not make BlackRock a lot of money, but this group has one of the most important roles in the company. They offer risk analysis, stress tests, and asset valuation to clients like European Central Bank, the government of Greece, and even the Federal Reserve, the gods. As a result, BlackRock is able to influence nearly every significant central bank in the world and gain access to the government. If you are the one helping central banks in making decisions, just think of the amount of insider information you could have at your disposal. Information like interest rates rising or falling, or even information about major market crashes, recessions, and inflations. In other words, the manipulators are connected to the gods of the market. Can't you see that it is all linked now? Today, BlackRock has become incredibly established within the American governments. And when you are so close to the governments, you can easily buy politicians. How much do you think it takes to buy a politician? You can buy a senator for just $10,000. And if you can give them 500k, they will pretty much do whatever you tell them to do. These politicians are just puppets that are controlled by the manipulators. They control most of the important assets and they control where the money flows. These politicians, they don't make a lot of money, which makes them really easy to bribe and manipulate. You see, controlling the politicians is just one of the many ways BlackRock uses to control the financial markets. As I dive deeper, I found out a really disturbing truth, and that is, they are profiting from wars. War is real fucking good for business. That's what one of the BlackRock recruiters just said in this interview here. War is real fucking good for, for business. It's exciting when goes wrong, right? Hundreds of people are getting injured or killed in the field. And all these people care about is how much money they're gonna make from this war. That is truly evil. For example, green silos in Ukraine are blown up by Russia. This will cause the price of wheats to increase. Right after this news comes out, BlackRock will be buying millions of shares of the wheat suppliers. The stock will rise to the moon in an hour or two and BlackRock will sell it and walk away with a few million dollars in profit. So let's recap. BlackRock owns almost every big company that exists, profit from wars and crises, and influences the government and central banks, and they also buy politicians. Since they are so powerful, why is it that we have never heard of them before? Because they don't want you to know about them. BlackRock owns 90% of the media. They own a portion of news and media companies like Fox, CBS, and Comcast. They also own a portion of social media platforms like Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. 
This means that if they wanted to be famous, if they wanted you to know about them, they will have easily appeared more often on these platforms. They are operating in secrecy because there is power in being anonymous. It's easier to do things and manipulate the markets when no one is watching, when nobody cares about you. And that is how BlackRock secretly rose to immense power and influence in this world. The next group of manipulators operate in the shadows and they have a massive influence over the financial markets, especially the stock market. They have been manipulating the stock market for decades now. They are the hedge funds and they are also known as the apex predators of Wall Street. These are the apex predators of Wall Street. They are in the business of shorting companies to destroy them. I mean, that is their business model. And they are not academic traders, okay, who are just speculating on outcome. They engineer the outcome. Nowadays, if you are a Forex trader, you will definitely trade GPUSD before. You might think that it is impossible to make $1 billion trading the Great Britain Pound, right? But someone did. And he did it 30 years ago. In the early 1990s, Britain was experiencing a recession and the value of the British Pound was declining slowly. The UK was facing economic issues like high inflation and high interest rates. At that point of time, a billionaire investor and hedge fund manager who went by the name George Soros thought that the British pound was overvalued, so he started shorting the pound quietly. The government faced one of the biggest financial crises in history. It was incredible. You can hear wave after wave of selling hitting the market. It was a day when the Bank of England lost billions and speculators made fortunes. In order to build out his short position, Soros and his hedge fund called Quantum Fund started to borrow pounds from various banks and hedge funds. On the night of September 16th, Soros sold 10 billion pounds that he borrowed. He started selling those pounds for other currencies like German marks and US dollars. This created a huge demand for other currencies and a huge supply of pounds which drove the value of the pound down. Other traders saw this huge short position and they started panic selling the pound too. The British government and the Bank of England tried to prevent this crash by deploying all sorts of measures like raising the interest rates and injecting money into the economy, but it didn't work. The selling pressure from Soros and other traders were way too strong. Over the next few days, GPUSD fell by 25%, and this huge drop cost Soros to make $1 billion from his short trade. It was uh, in excess of a, a billion dollars of, of profits. This is the reason why people call George Soros the man who broke the Bank of England. This story of George Soros shorting the pound perfectly captures what it takes to become a hedge fund manager. As a hedge fund, you don't have to predict where the price of stocks or currencies will go. All you need to do is to identify opportunities in the market and engineer the outcome to happen. After all, who do you think makes up the stock market or the currency market or the crypto market? It's not algorithms. It's not robots. It is humans. So whatever market that you want to manipulate, it all boils down to understanding basic human nature, which is fear and greed. That is why every market manipulation tactic in these hedge funds playbooks ultimately comes down to triggering people's fear to create a selling pressure or triggering people's greed to create a buying pressure. That means if they want to drive a stock up, what they will do is to convince everyone that this stock is going to the moon. So you all should get in right now before it's too late. That is why you will start seeing news or social media telling you that, oh, this stock is skyrocketing. This new crypto coin is going to 10x in the next one month. Buy now or regret later. And then when you finally decide to get in, it's already too late because these hedge funds have already got out at the top and you will act as their exit liquidity. This is what happened to Bitcoin. This is what happened to the whole crypto trading industry. And this is also what happened to growth stocks like Tesla and Apple. They are all preying on your greed, your desire to get rich and your fear, your fear of losing money. In order to truly understand how these billionaire hedge funds manipulate the markets, we need someone from the inside, someone who has worked at hedge funds before and knows how they operate behind the scenes. So let me introduce you to Jim Cramer who is the annoying host on the show Mad Money on CNBC. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramerica. 
other people want to make friends, I'm just trying to make some money. He knows all about the playing field because he used to be a hedge fund manager before he became a TV star. In December 2006, he did an interview where he exposed how hedge fund managers can drive the price of a stock up or down. You know, a lot of times when I was short at my hedge fund and I was positioned short, meaning I needed it down, uh, I would uh, create a, um, a level of activity beforehand that could drive the futures. It doesn't take much money. Hedge funds would do whatever they can, even to commit illegal acts in order to save themselves. The most common tactic hedge funds use is media manipulation. When your company's in a survival mode, it's really important to defeat research in motion and get the Pisanis of the world and the people talking about it as if there's something wrong with RIM. Then you would call the journal and you get the Bozo reporter on research in motion and you would feed that there's a palm's got a killer it's going to give away. These are all the things you must do on a day like today. And if you're not doing it, maybe you shouldn't be in the game. If I were a short Apple, I would be working very hard today to get that. And the way you would do that is you pick up the phone, you call Six Trading Desk, and you say, listen, I just got off the phone with my contact at Verizon. And he has already said, listen, we're not, we're a lucky G house. Uh, we're a Samsung house. We, we, we're a Motorola house. There's no room for Apple. They want too much. That we're not going to let them in. You know, I think that's a very effective way to keep a stock down. Right. What he's saying is that hedge funds literally fit the media fake news in order to make everyone think that there is something wrong. And then they will start selling the stock. And this selling pressure will then drive a stock down, which is exactly what the hedge funds wanted in the first place. This is what I mean when I say that they don't predict where price is gonna go and hope that it goes in their way. They engineer the outcome to their favor. Um, and these are all uh, what's really going on under the market that you don't see. Right, and don't, but, nobody else talks about right, it. But what, what, what's important when you're in that hedge fund mode is to not do anything remotely truthful. Because the truth is so against your view right. that it's important to create a new truth to develop a fiction. The fiction is developed uh, by almost anybody who's down like 2% to up 6% here. You can't take any chances. You can't have the market up any more than it is if you're up 6 Because starting Jan 2, you'll have all your money come out. So right. what would you do if you're in that situation and you feel like you're desperate is that you would do these actions? If you are a trader, you've probably heard of the phrase, buy the rumor, sell the news. This phrase means that traders will buy the stock when a rumor about a positive news or event is circulating. This expectation that something good will happen will then raise demand for the stock, causing its price to go up. However, when the good news actually comes out, the market may react differently than expected. For example, even though the news was good for the stock, the price of the stock might still go down. Every trader or investor thinks that to make money, you just need to buy stocks of good companies and only sell companies that you think will go down. After all, it's all about the fundamentals of the company, right? Wrong. So you're talking about the mechanics of the market. Well, you know, the mechanics are much more important than the fundamentals. Oh, okay, well, but in terms of the fundamentals, you've been writing about how Who you cares think- cares about the fundamentals? Research in motion just blew out the court. Right. But look what people can do. I mean, that's a fabulous thing. The great thing about the market is it has nothing to do with the actual stocks. Right. I think it's important for people to recognize that the way that the market really works is to is to have that nexus of, of hit the brokerage houses with a series of orders that can push it down, then leak it to the press, um, and then get it on CNBC. That's also very important. A and then you have a kind of a vicious cycle down. Right. And it's a pretty good game. This just proved that understanding fundamentals are not important as understanding the mechanics of the market. You see, these manipulators do not give a shit about you. All they care about is themselves and how much money they are going to make. That is why they will continue to manipulate the markets to their favor. And the truth is, there is nothing we can do to stop them. However, what we can do is to trade with them instead of going against them. At the end of the day, you have to understand that they are the ones with the power and the money to move the market. If you trade against them, it's like going against a strong wave that will devour you. If you trade with them, you can ride this strong wave and make a shit ton of money. The last group of people that control the financial markets are known as the makers. I call them the makers because they literally make or create a market. Their goal is to suck out as much money as possible from the average retail trader. However, without them, we will not be able to trade at all. The market makers are individuals or institutions that partners with a broker to increase liquidity on the broker, which means they ensure that there is always a market for the asset, making it easier for traders like us to buy or sell. 
They achieve this by acting as both buyers and sellers for all securities, stocks, forex or crypto, whatever that is traded on the broker. The problem is that not everyone is willing to buy the stock you are selling or sell the stock where you wish to buy. That is when the makers step in because they will guarantee to buy or sell the given stock to you at prices that are either above or below the market price. They quote the bid and ask price of a particular asset. The bid price is the highest price that a buyer or bidder is willing to pay for a security. The ask price is the lowest price that a seller or asker is willing to accept for a security. Example, if a stock has a bid price of $50 and an ask price of $51, that means that there is a buyer willing to buy the stock at $50 and there is a seller willing to sell the stock at $51. When you place an order to buy, you will pay the ask price, which is $51. When you place an order to sell, you will receive the bid price which is $50. It is important for you to understand the bid and ask price because it provides you with information about the current supply and demand of the market. Narrow spreads means the market is more liquid. Wider spread means the market is less liquid. And that also means that transaction costs will increase. On the surface level, the makers might seem like good guys who are only in the business to help us. But if you dive deep into the dark side of the market makers, you will discover something rather evil. And that is they profit from your losses. The makers make much of their money from manipulating the markets and misleading retail traders like us into buying and selling at the worst times possible. How these market makers make money is through these bid and ask spreads. Their offers to buy are always below the market price and their offers to sell are always above the market price. That is why as soon as you execute your trade, you will instantly lose money because the market makers automatically make money from the bid and ask spread. One of the biggest market makers is the Citadel Securities. If you look closely, you will find out that they are actually a part of Citadel, which is a hedge fund. So the makers are connected to the manipulators and the manipulators who are also connected to the gods. These three main groups are working together to manipulate the markets all they want. Their goal is to transfer your hard-earned money into the pockets of the elites. Just like the manipulators, the makers have been here around for decades. So they have gotten insanely good at manipulating the markets. They also have different strategies in their arsenal to manipulate the markets. One of these strategies is known as layering. This is when market makers enter fake orders into the market to bait retail traders. For example, let's say Tesla is trading at $221 per share. The evil market makers will enter in a buy order for 1 million Tesla shares at $220 per share. When a retail trader sees such a large volume, they will start to think that the big boys or smart money have entered the market, so they all should enter for a buy too. Then right before the stock actually hits $220, the makers will cancel their orders, which means that only the retail traders are left in the market. By using this unethical tactic, the makers have successfully added a large amount of buying pressure to Tesla without spending a single cent themselves. This will cause the price of Tesla to go up rapidly. Another manipulation tactic they use is called bear or bull raiding. If you ever wonder why your stop loss keep getting hit, this is exactly why. Bull raiding is when the makers buy a large sum of assets to move the price of that asset up. Bear raiding is when they sell a large sum of assets to move the price of the asset down. However, what the makers do is that they won't just enter and start bear or bull raiding randomly. They will wait for the price of a particular stock or asset to reach a level where retail traders like you commonly place your stop losses. For example, let's say the makers want the price of Euro USD to go down, but it has been super bullish and it has just broken past a strong resistance level. Most retail traders will enter for a buy immediately when price breaks through a key resistance level and they will place their stop loss below the resistance level. Now, here's the fun part. The makers will start to sell a large sum of Euro USD, creating lots of selling pressure and this causes the price to go down 
and trigger all the stop loss of these dumb retail traders. Because of that, there will be very less buyers in the market because the rest of the buyers have already been stopped out. This reduces the buying pressure in the market and increases the selling pressure. And this causes a domino effect of selling and fear. Now, all these retail traders start to sell your USD as well because they see price reversing and heading down. The next thing you know, the price of your USD starts going down rapidly and the makers will walk away with a small and a large sum of profit in their hands by closing their short positions. This is what we call a bear rate. A bull rate is basically the opposite of a bear rate where the makers try to push the price up. Now you know why you keep getting faked out whenever you are trading stocks or forex or crypto. Since the makers are the ones executing your trades, they know where you are placing your stop losses and they're gonna use it to their advantage. Whatever I shared with you today is just the tip of the iceberg. From the day you started watching your first trading tutorial on YouTube to right now, you have been conditioned to follow the conventional path and to trade a certain way. By now, you should wake up and realize that most trading advice, most news and media does not actually make you money. They are there to make you lose money so the elites can become richer and richer. If there is a conventional path, there is also an unconventional path that is designed for you to master trading fast and to become a profitable trader faster than the rest. As much as I want to share with you the conventional path, I don't think you are ready for it yet. Because right now, you still have certain limiting beliefs that are causing you to be stuck in the system. These beliefs have trapped you in the losing phase and they are holding you back from trading success. I want you to think and analyze your belief about the markets because your belief direct your thinking and your thinking direct your actions. If you genuinely believe that losses are bad and useless, you will never be able to learn from them. And if you don't learn from your losses and mistakes, how are you going to improve and eventually become a successful trader? Your belief about the market affect your chances of becoming a profitable and successful trader. In order to inspect your belief, you need to think about the following questions. What are my trading habits? What strategy do I believe in? What trading advice are not working for me right now? Who are the people that controls the market? And lastly, how do professional traders trade? I want you to take a piece of paper right now and write down your answers. Inside the Liberation series, my goal is to unwire your brain and reprogram it so that you can forget about the limiting beliefs that are holding you back from success and instill new beliefs that will make you a top 1% trader. So in the next episode, I will expose the dark side of the trading industry from illegitimate brokers to fake trading signals. These are the traps that most retail traders tend to fall into. So it is important that you understand them so you can avoid them and avoid losing your hard-earned money. And while I was researching for this series, I realized that the deeper I dig, the more shit I find. But there are certain information that I cannot share here. But I will be sharing them on my private telegram group for the liberation. And you can click the first link in the description to join the group for free. It seems like most people in this industry do not want you to win, but not me. I have made over 100 plus educational trading videos on this channel with one goal in mind. My goal for this YouTube channel is to change your life, change the way you trade, help you master trading, and most importantly, help you break free from this unfair system. From the bottom of my heart, I genuinely want to see you succeed. Like, it makes me happy whenever I see comments of you guys telling me that my free videos have made you a profitable trader, that you have managed to buy a new car because of my trading videos. That is why in the third episode of the Liberation series, I will share with you the exact system I use that allowed me to finally break free from all this noise and finally make consistent profits from the market. This is where you finally step foot out of the losing phase and you enter a new world of the one percenters. Even when everyone wants to see you fail, remember that I will always be rooting for you. Welcome to the Liberation and I'll see you in the second episode. Mwah.